The Eccentric family represents a marvel, not just in regards to the PA Works library, but also in regards to creative adaptation. At Anime Expo 2016, PA Works president Kenji Horikawa stated that one of the big reasons the studio only produces original series and adaptations of novels is that they want the freedom to be able to express a product themselves, the ability to be able to develop a world from scratch and have no manga editors slapping their wrists whenever they come up with something visually extravagant. And that's what the eccentric family is extravagant, magical, yet is formed out of the very real city of Kyoto. It's not a comfortable show at times, but there's love in it. That's an odd sentence and an even odder sentiment, but the clash of inhuman concepts is yet another remarkable part of this show, and with the second season being released in spring, I'm glad to have an excuse to talk about not just the show, but the people who helped us fall in love with it. I've spoken about PA Works in the past and even interviewed the studio's president, but it bears repeating that the studio is on a quest. A quest to be able to recruit and train animators so as to be able to produce anime without having to rely on other companies to chip in and instead using their own contacts and their own staff to be able to make something that they can all really stand behind and say we did this, and what could be more we did this than a show not only directed by one of the founders of the studio, but that founder also leads the studio's animation department, Masayuki Yoshihara. There are directors that have a very clear defined vision of a show and will get everyone to fall in line and pursue that particular vision. Hayao Miyazaki was famous for this and in reaction it's now very difficult to find animators that worked under Miyazaki who actually liked him. But one of the big reasons that PA Works wants to recruit and train animators and do things in house is to create a collaborative atmosphere. In the future, I want animators who can proactively work on projects like a team and staff who can discuss the best course of action among themselves. But these days, I've realised that when people work together, especially in a mentor-student kind of relationship, they feel extremely stressed. Nevertheless, I understand that the reason why animators feel so mentally fatigued is because they don't feel that they're actually contributing to the project. As much as a person can individually temper their skills through work, Work, I believe it is essential for many staffers to engage with the creators of anime through dialogue. I want to foster that kind of environment. I want to create a team that can convey those kind of ideas. It's impossible if we shy away from dialogue after all. Determining a studio image is vague and generally inconclusive, but the words of its president tells us a lot more about the aspirations behind every product. Yoshihara is the other founder of PA Works and after being on loan at Production IG, he returned in 2010 to train the young animators at the studio and strive for this sort of atmosphere. The first production they worked on together was Mai's Magic and the Family Day, a 30 minute TV special funded by the local government to show the importance of family bonds and it was distributed to schools and kindergartens within the area. But that wasn't it for our returning hero, because as a part of training young animators, he participated in the government funded Young Animator Training Project with a short called All Purpose Vegetable Ninenman. And two years later, he took the animation director of that show, Kosuke Kawazura, and made him the character designer of his first TV series directorial debut. The Eccentric Family. But let's cycle back once again because to understand The Eccentric Family's production, you've kind of got to understand where PA Works came from. Both founders are heavily connected to Production IG and during the 10 years where they were setting up the studio and doing contract work for other teams, they were working with a lot of people, many of whom ended up working with them on future projects. The future background director of the eccentric family and true tears, Yusuke Takeda, is one of them. 
but the character I wanted to explore more thoroughly is one of the people who worked alongside both Kinji Harakawa and Masayuki Yoshihara on Ghost in the Shell standalone complex, Toshiyuki Inoue, the perfect animator. There's some animators that kind of reach a legendary status within the industry, a point where seeing them attached to a project is a genuine surprise and the only jobs they end up taking are incredibly high profile. Or they're invited by a good friend. Anime is an industry of connections and Masayuki Yoshihara is very good friends with Toshiyuki Inoue, meaning that even though Inoue almost exclusively works on films, He'll also take the time to work with his friend on PA Works TV shows, a platform he's objectively too good for. Toshiyuki Inoue attracted attention in the industry when he debuted with Goo Goo Ganmo. Since then, he has participated in many renowned projects, including Akira, Memories, Ghost in the Shell, Jinro, Blood the Last Vampire, and Millennium Actress. Because of his thoroughness and the level of quality in his animation, he's referred to as the perfect animator. Instead of becoming a character designer or animation director, Inoue apparently prefers to work as a solo key animator, investigating the movement part of anime. Currently, he is focusing on recreating human movements faithfully and creating realistic drawings. He is also working on advancing his deep abiding love and knowledge of anime, as well as guiding others towards improvement. That was a quote from Anime Star Magazine Editor-in-Chief Yuichiro Ogura, the journalist who personally inspires me the most. But anyways, it was Mamoru Oshii that called him the perfect animator, and very shortly after his key animation debut, he had gathered attention, particularly from those that wanted to represent realistic timing and weight on screen. Satoshi Kon, Hayao Miyazaki, Katsuhiro Otomo, here was this incredible animator that just a few years after his key animation debut was being scouted out by industry legends who wanted to capitalise on his ability to portray realism on screen. And thanks to his friendship with Yoshihara, all of the skills and hard work that contributed to Akira, Ghost in the Shell and Kiki's Delivery Service is making a home at PA Works, primarily on the eccentric family. But one of the other interesting things about Inoue isn't just his marriage of surreality and reality, but the speed at which he creates it. In an interview with PA Works president Kenji Horikawa in 2005, he said this. The current trend seems to be to not worry that much about the volume and only focus on quality. That really worries me. It's not a fair match if you can't achieve the same level of quality with the same amount. Toshiyuki Inoue is fast. He started out in a generation where people were constantly saying, draw faster, draw faster, yet everyone around him was producing really simple cuts, whilst he was making stuff like this. And as Horikawa notes, an animator doesn't go from quality to quantity, but rather a good animator sets goals and knows how much time to spend on each cut and practices knocking that time down. Yoshihara once told an anecdote of how he kept a stopwatch at his desk to constantly improve the speed of his drawing and would often peek into other booths next to him to see if he could match their pace. Mamoru Oshii may have been referring to the quality of Inoue's work when he referred to him as the perfect animator, but his strive for quality as well and the refusal to accept the balance is what turned him into the person he is today. Someone who can work on the greatest theatrical films, but still be able to create great work for the shows that his friends are making. And so if there's one message to take from this second PA Works Studio Spotlight, it's that there's nothing more important than friendship. I've always wanted to say that in a video. Thanks for watching The Kenneper Effect, and I would like to thank Frogkun and Blue Sakaga for their translation help for this video. Also, I'm now closing votes on the Patreon poll for the next video. The results are 27 votes for a second Studio Trigger Spotlight and 13 votes for a video on Pokemon Sun and Moon. The next video will be on Studio Trigger and the Pokemon video will be made later down the line. 
But before I go, I'd like to give a special thank you to these people for supporting the channel. In particular, I'd like to thank the adaptable Alborio, the knowledgeable K Animations, the ideal Isaac Wu, the hardy Hadiz, the proactive Petra Clothia, the meritable Mancosa Laplante, the selfless Sam Lediard, the mythological Martin Grajana, and the adamantine Abel Toy. Check out the Canper Effect Patreon for all details.